three, two, one. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. Another day of just so much fun and excitement in quarantine land. The Puff and Steph podcast hanging out in your listening device. Hello, Steph. Hello. You know, when you sit in front of that window, it makes like the back of your head shine. Like, like you're ascending from the heavens. An angel. Or something. <laughs> yes. Oh. It's, it's kind of, it's just this, yeah, that's that window shining in. It's, it's. It's a good lighting effect. Okay, just want to let you know that. want to thank everyone for uh, joining us last night for Tuesdays with Olivia. It was a good time. We appreciate you guys being there. We do it every single Tuesday. Remember, Sunday, fun day, back for another uh, night of fun coming up this weekend. Make sure you're there for that. Steph, it is Wednesday, and we're going to do Would You Rather Wednesday. But I don't think it's what we should start talking about because this is the first episode that we're recording since I added another member to my family. So I thought maybe that's what we should talk about before we got into the Would You Rather. That's what I was going to say. We have to talk about cash. So for those of you who don't know, uh, last week I drove, it was Friday, I drove down to Kentucky, which was a nine-hour drive. Um, stayed in a hotel. Saturday morning, I went and picked up a bulldog named Cash. And Saturday, we drove back here to Central PA, and he is now a member of my family. A couple of you have asked why I didn't go to a local rescue. It's pretty simple. Cash wasn't at a rescue. Cash was uh, owned by a friend of mine from high school who had some medical issues and couldn't take care of him anymore. So it, we really weren't looking. Like if we were going to rescue a dog, we would absolutely do it locally. Right. Um, we weren't looking. Uh, this guy approached me and asked me if we'd be interested. So it, it, that's it was a what unique it was. situation. Yeah, it definitely was. I'm all for like, thanks to Steph, I'm all for rescues and trying to, trying to you know, what is it, adopt, don't shop type thing, whatever you say. And um, yeah. That's what we were thinking about doing the next dog, but we weren't like really in the process of even bringing one into the house. And then one kind of got shoved in our direction, and we're glad he did. He's he's a good dog. So he's adjusting well. I think so. He's uh, he's slow. We found out um, originally we were told that he was five, but he's actually eight and a half. And if you know anything about bulldogs, that's senior he's a senior bulldog so um we 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 know he's gonna move slow which he does the good news is there's like zero chance of him running away that's true you don't have to worry about that (laughs) no like we had him out in the front lawn with no leash and i'm telling you he does not want to go anywhere that's not within five feet of us oh what a good boy And, and even if he did we could catch him he's very he's very slow He's not like Moogie, who will get no. out and run across the neighborhood. No, not at all. No, Moogie is, yeah, we have to lock him down. Cash, honestly, yeah, he's fine. There's zero interest in him leaving here, I think. So, you know, he's adjusting well. Uh, he likes the hardwood floor. He sleeps all day, pretty much. He, does, he, he tries to get up on the furniture with us, but he can't. But he tries to climb, and it's cute. Is all is all get up like? Because he's smaller than Ronnie was. Yeah, so he puts his front paw up and looks at you, and then puts his second paw up, and then tries to climb up our couch, and his little back legs are kicking, trying to do. Oh, and, oh. and, and he, yeah, he's uh, it's pretty funny. It's 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 pretty adorable, I must say. Um, oh, I can't wait to meet him. He looks so sweet and cute and cuddly and lazy. And squishy face. I love a squishy face. Yeah, he's got really bad breath. Um, so get ready for that when you meet him. <laughs> you know what? That's a that's dogs for you. Oh, They're bad. used to sleep every night. He smells great from from mouth to butt, but those two ends are terrible. <laughs> like in the middle we have this shampoo stuff we use on him and it's great and he smells awesome. But his breath smells, and he's got heinous gas. Um, oh, yeah. So that's, yeah, mouth to butt. He smells great. Those <laughs> opposite ends, his bookends are not very good. <laughs> but, no, he's he's adjusting well. And Moogie has been decent. 
Um, he could have. He could be a lot worse. He's doing okay. It, you know, it's stressful for him. It's a new. It's a new dog in the house. Um, we introduced them outside on the corner. Like I brought Cash out of my car, and, and uh, the wife had him on the corner, and uh, we kind of introduced them that way. And then we walked into the house, and Moogie was not having it. He he wasn't. Oh, well, he, yeah, it's probably confusing for him. Of course it is, yeah. And I don't even know if he remembers Ronnie or what, but all I know is that the last few months he's been the only dog in the house, so he's gotten all the attention. Right. So now it's a little bit different. Um, and Cash, he breathes like a bulldog. So he breathes like this. <sighs> Not all the time, but a lot of the time. It's like that creepy kid from Hey Arnold, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, Moogie thinks that's growls. So he thinks Cash is growling at him. Oh, my God. So he thinks, like, I'm just breathing, dude. He thinks Cash <laughs> is being aggressive when Cash Cash couldn't even care that Mugatu's there. That's the funny right. thing. Like He doesn't really go after him. He doesn't really inspect him at all. He's more of a people dog. Like He wants to go up to people. Uh but Moogie, Moogie has snapped at him, barked at him, growled at him, never bit him. But, uh, yeah, Moog, I'm saying your name a lot. Hey, he came over to say hi. Aww. So now they're pretty close because Cash is right under my feet, which is kind of funny because do you remember where Ronnie used to lay when, when you yeah. came in here? Ronnie, for those of you who don't know, Ronnie uh, would lay under the table during a lot of shows. Um, almost every show we did, Ronnie would be under the table and he'd fall asleep. Well, that's where Cash is right now. I didn't make him do it, he, but he's under the desk here in, in the studio and he fell asleep. So, Such a good boy. I love him already. <laughs> you never even met him. But I already love him. He's the you. best boy. I know you do. All right, so that that's uh, Cash. We'll be getting you know used to him and you'll have cash stories i'm sure and he's a new member of the family new member of the show really he is absolutely because you know, we put our dogs on we'll see you'll see if he eats grapes too okay um time to do would you rather real quick here would you rather have whatever you're thinking to appear above your head for everyone to see like a bubble like in a bubble oh that's rough okay. or have absolutely everything you do live streamed for everyone to see Oh, I think I'm going to have to go with the live stream really? because it's not. Yeah, because not that I want anybody to see me like running or doing something that's just isn't f like isn't flattering looking. But everything like you do, everything you do live streamed. So Steph bathroom break, Steph in the shower. Oh, I didn't even think about that stuff. Steph doing maybe unflattering stretching. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, that could be really bad, but it's not like I'm doing anything I would be, like, ashamed of. You know what I mean? Right. Or, like, right. that, like oh, that, my mom good, to know. That's a good point. Or, you know, when this all clears up, Steph on date. Steph's date's <laughs> Saturday at 8, guys. Who's tuning in? <laughs> that would be hilarious. It could be like a sitcom. Yeah. I mean, that could definitely be TMI for people, I think. But I don't think it would be as embarrassing as the thought bubble could be, you know? Because right. sometimes you think things that you don't even mean to think. Like about somebody that you like. And maybe you're just like, oh, she looks bad. Like, I, that kind of thing. <laughs> that dress is not flattering. Oh, wow. Steph's a real, you know what? Um... <laughs> I would do the bubble. Really? Here's the thing. I pretty much say what I think. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so, it, it, I don't know if it just beats me to the punch. Is the bubble quicker than my words? Do they get bubble and then I shoot them out? Because I, I really don't hold a lot in. Right. So, it would just be a matter of which one happens first. But right. It wouldn't really matter. Right. Because I'm usually like, think it, say it. They could say it. Where some other people are a little bit more tactful with their words. <laughs> I just overthink everything. I always think that something I say is going to come out wrong. Like, I just, <laughs> could you I'm imagine afraid of being things. out with your friends, right? Being out with your friends. And one of them just kind of, like, looks at you. And all of a sudden, your thought bubble comes up. Why'd Marissa look at me like that? 
does she hate me? Why does she hate me? <laughs> that thing that happened was like six years ago. I thought we squashed it. Maybe it's something <laughs> else. What does she not tell? And just your thought bubble is just, it keeps recycling over and over and over again because you just keep going something. And Marissa's like, Steph, I'm not mad at you. I just had something in my eye or I thought I saw somebody I knew across the room. I'm, I'm not mad. <laughs> See, yeah, that would be bad for me, and I don't think I would have any friends because no one would want to hang out with me and see all of that. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> all right, we'll ask you what you think on the Facebook page. Coming up next, is this really selling out? I, I don't know if it is or it isn't. One of them, though, definitely is. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy, no websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Hey, Hey honey, how are the taxes going? Pretty good. Let's see. We either get $800 back or we owe four grand. Hmm. I think we should call H&R Block. Let's face it, taxes can be confusing and the laws seem to change every year. Let the professionals at your local H&R Block take the worry out of your tax season. H&R Block in Dillsburg, Newville, Biglerville, Fairfield, and Gettysburg have been owned by the same family for over 50 years. And they've been there for every tax law change along the way. Don't leave money on the table. File your taxes confidently with H&R Block. Everyone is going through something right now, and we're all in this together. That's why CBD American Shaman of PA is looking out for you and your health. During this trying time, CBD American Shaman of PA is focused on safety and the needs of their customers. That's why right now they're offering curbside pickup along with home deliveries. Let American Shaman help you manage these stressful times. To find out how to get high-quality CBD products and a free bottle of Shaman cleansing gel without even leaving your car or home, visit HempisHealth.com. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. I don't know if you've seen this, but on YouTube, John Krasinski, you know who that is um, from The Office? I love him, yeah. Well, he started this thing called Some Good News. I don't know if you saw it, right? It's it's this. um, We actually talked about, didn't a couple get married there? And the people from The Office did like a Zoom music video for them or something like that. Yep. But it's like a handwritten SGN uh, on a piece of cardboard and they, they're like, boop, 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 some good news. And then they, and then they talk about the good things going on in the world right now. It's cute. It's funny. John Krasinski, obviously famous. His wife, Emily Blunt, obviously famous there. That's who she is, right? Emily Blunt. I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they get their famous friends like Emma Stone did the weather for them. It's, it, it's funny. It's dumb. It's fun. Yeah. But people are mad at them right now. And I don't understand the hate. Basically, what happened is John Krasinski sold the show Some Good News to CBS. They were uh, they they offered him a couple, you know, a couple different offers and he said no, no, no. And then finally, uh, after resisting the urge to sell the series, he gave in and sold it to CBS. So now CBS owns the right to produce some good news. And it looks like there's going to be new episodes that come out and he's not going to be a part of him anymore. Oh, so they didn't buy it with him as the host. I think they probably wanted him to be, but he just didn't. He honestly, he probably started this as something to do during the pandemic. And then when things started to get back to normal, he would get back to his normal famous person life. Right, but, love other things. You know, millions of people are watching this, so of course these big companies step in and they start like a bidding war for for his 
for his honestly it's kind of dumb some good news show like when is when is when is it gonna be our time steph when is it gonna be our time for cbs, you mean for CBS to buy us? to buy us does somebody come in and offer us a lot of money? Joe Rogan just got a hundred million dollars from Spotify. When is it going to be our time? I don't want a hundred million dollars. But no, we don't need that much money. We've been doing this before the pandemic, just because we're not John Krasinski. Ooh. Sorry, I wasn't <laughs> Jim from The Office. CBS. Well, I bet you that it was a really tough decision. Like, do we buy the Puff and Steph podcast? Do we buy some good news? Like, it was probably a close race. And they went with the star power. I get it. I get it. I think we produce better shows than they do. I personally do. I personally do. <laughs> that's, maybe that's I haven't, yeah, I, I haven't actually watched them. I've just seen people posting about it. Yep. But, yeah, um, he, it looks like he's going to just kind of be an executive producer. It's going to be on CBS All Access. So it's going to be on a streaming platform that you actually have to buy. To, to Another do streaming platform. Oh, my gosh. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Um, speaking of selling out, <laughs> COVID-19 testing site in Orlando put up a big sign announcing that it is, in fact, a testing site. One of the problems people are having or saying that's a problem is the fact that not enough people are getting tested right now. So they put up this big thing to advertise they have a testing site. And it's... <laughs> The sign also contained a big picture of an ice cold glass of Pepsi, along with their slogan, That's What I Like. <laughs> what? So they're at, trying to advertise yeah. for like other things. So they have this, <laughs> no, like Pepsi bought the sign. Pepsi was like, All right, I'll, we'll, we'll pay for that site to go up, but it'll say COVID 19 testing site. And then enjoy an ice cold glass of Pepsi. That's what I like. <laughs> There's like two different moods going on because COVID's like so like depressing. Yeah. And then it's like Pepsi. Yeah. Pepsi. Not a cure for COVID, but it'll make you feel better. All right. That's funny. Here's, I, don't, I mean, I don't blame them, I guess. Right. Like I look at it and I go, eh, that's kind of in poor taste. But I then I move about my life. Right. right. Of course. People on Twitter started going crazy. And because Twitter is real life, by the way, only about 3% of the population's on Twitter. But because Twitter is real life, they actually removed the sign. Did they really? Took it all down. Well, I mean, I, I do think it's kind of in poor taste, I but agree. at the same time, businesses have to continue to try to make money. I mean, if they paid for the sign, they can technically advertise for their drink if they want. I agree. Businesses need to make money. And that's why if you want to advertise on the Puff and Stuff podcast, hit me up. Puff at puffandstuff.com. Okay. Um, but I think that this kind of, it's stupid. This is a dumb story, but it calls to a bigger issue. And that's the fact that we are, in fact, giving in to complainers on Twitter. It seems like Twitter has become this thing where all people do is complain. And for some reason, big businesses are giving into it. And I don't understand why. Because like I said, I threw out that fact, it's real, like 3% of the population is on Twitter. That's it. More people are like you and I, where if we see something that bothers us, as long as somebody's not in trouble, like if we see some like homeless guy getting beat up by a gang of thugs, we're not like, oh, <laughs> sucks to be him. Let's go about our day. That's not what I'm. <laughs> right. That's not what I'm talking about. But something like this, where it's like, oh, that's. I don't know how I feel about that. I think that might be in poor taste. Hmm. Okay. It really doesn't have an impact in our lives, and I really don't think it's hurting anybody. But the difference between you and myself and psychopaths is that we don't complain about it. Right. I, I don't have the time to complain about every little thing like that. I don't know. I just have other other stuff going on, I guess. <laughs> I think like the the the, the 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 phrase I live by, don't sweat the small stuff, is real when it comes to something like this. In reality, is it that big of a deal that a COVID-19 testing, <laughs> testing area is brought to you by Pepsi? No, it's is it weird? Yeah, is it a little bit in poor taste? Yeah, but if they think they're gonna get a nice stream of people waiting in line, right, for them to do the test where they shove that thing in your nose, 
Ugh. <laughs> I know. It's actually pretty smart. Because you're sitting there waiting and you're like, man, that big glass of Pepsi does look kind of good. Yeah, I think I'm going to go get one after I get that thing shoved in my nose. <laughs> right. I mean, honestly, businesses are trying to make it right now. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that Pepsi has never been in trouble of not making it through this whole thing. But, I mean, businesses have to continue to try to make money. True that. Is it in poor taste? Yes. Is it worth blowing it up on Twitter? Personally, I don't think so. Coming up next, this I guarantee this story is going to make you go, oh, and it's not about dogs. Yeah. Coming up. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part it's free. No big coupon books to buy, no websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Hey, Hey honey, how are the taxes going? Pretty good. Let's see. We either get eight hundred dollars back, or we owe four grand. Hmm. I think we should call H and R Block. Let's face it, taxes can be confusing, and the laws seem to change every year. Let the professionals at your local H and R Block take the worry out of your tax season. H and R Block in Dillsburg, Newville, Biglerville, Fairfield, and Gettysburg have been owned by the same family for over 50 years, and they've been there for every tax law change along the way. Don't leave money on the table. File your taxes confidently with H and R Block. Everyone is going through something right now, and we're all in this together. That's why CBD American Shaman of PA is looking out for you and your health. During this trying time, CBD American Shaman of PA is focused on safety and the needs of their customers. That's why right now they're offering curbside pickup along with home deliveries. Let American Shaman help you manage these stressful times. To find out how to get high-quality CBD products and a free bottle of Shaman Cleansing Gel without even leaving your car or home, visit HempisHealth.com. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. 100% guarantee that this is going to make you go, aw. In Queensland, Australia, Tin Can Bay is popular for tourists because that's where wild dolphins line up to be fed fish by humans. Oh, I love dolphins. Right? So cute. The dolphin feeding at Barnacles Dolphin Center is regulated and closely monitored by the Queensland government with a group of volunteers on site to ensure it is an enjoyable experience for both the humans and the dolphins. Make sure there's no weirdos out there um, who are like really too into dolphins, if you know what I mean. Those people exist. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that, that, was the correct, that was the correct face for that statement. Uh, since the lockdown, the dolphins are apparently missing all the visitors because that's in lockdown. And people aren't coming to see the dolphins right now. Right. Um, they have started, the dolphins, leaving gifts on the beach in an effort to lure the humans back. Nah. They have been leaving sponges, barnacle-covered bottles, and fragments of coral on the shoreline to encourage humans to return. No way. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. That's the cutest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm going to go there. I will go there <laughs> to give them company. Tin can, I will do it. Tin Can Bay. I told you it was going to make you go, oh. oh. That makes my heart so happy, but sad because they're lonely and they miss people. I know. Like, come on, dolphins. Well, how about, like, you bring us something better than coral fragments? I would take a coral fragment from a dolphin. I'd keep it forever. How about you dive down deep and grab me an oyster with a pearl in it or something? <laughs> How about, how about some of that buried treasure that's down there? You go grab some of that gold, throw it up on the beach. 
You're right. These dolphins are really slacking with their presence. You want to be mad at someone? Be mad at the people that run that thing. Right? What, what's the name of it? It's the uh, Barnacles Dolphin Center. It costs money. Right? It costs money to go in there. We don't have money right now. We're all broke. Can't be going to Australia. I wouldn't go to Australia anyway. Dolphins, you want stuff from me? Come over here. You swim over in, uh, in uh, Susquehanna. <laughs> Are there dolphins in the Susquehanna? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. There's crazy stuff in the Susquehanna. Could you imagine if there were dolphins in the Susquehanna? Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> like, like you're, like you're on that the riverboat, the pride of the Susquehanna, and you're like, these dolphins are shooting out of the water. <laughs> or you're at like the Senators game, and you look over the the ledge there at the river, and there's. Yes. Oh, that would be so great. If only. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Central PA, not a dolphin hotbed. Uh, this these engaged couple from Northern Ireland set their wedding date for October sixteenth, twenty twenty. Now I have some weddings that I'm DJing in September and October, but right now they're kind of up in the air. Are we going to be ready to go by then? Is everything going to be open? Are they going to be able to get married? Well, I'm hoping that none of my couples did this during vacation last June. Kearney, that's her name, and Donald, that's his name, had time to kill before their flight home. So they did some bar hopping and spontaneously decided to get matching tattoos on their forearms. Do you know what the tattoo was? The date of the wedding. Yeah. Oh, oh. At the time, it probably seemed like a great idea. <laughs> they had their wedding date written in Roman numerals, which is... X V I X M M X X, which is 16 10 2020. So that's November 16th, or excuse me, October 16, 2020. All was well until the pandemic hit, and the wedding venue called them to tell them that they had to postpone their wedding. The couple moved the date to April 22nd of next year. But now they're stuck forever with the tattoos of their wrong wedding date. No, uh, I mean, that sucks, but it's kind of a fun little like story that they can tell people. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe they can celebrate their wedding date on that day anyway. You know what I mean? Like their anniversaries and stuff. Right. Because I know some people are still technically getting like married on that day, just having like a really small thing and then having the actual celebration when everybody's allowed to be together. Yeah. That's what a couple of my couples are doing. They're They're getting married on their actual wedding day and then you know, having the party later. So, but yeah, just, I'm, that's, people ask me, do you have any tattoos? I say no. And it's there forever, forever and ever and ever. And yep. you know, maybe this is something you should make sure of. Like if you have a kid, you're always going to have that kid. Oh, I have a kid. His name is Ben and he's tattooed on my arm. Cause I'm always going to have Ben. Yes, that's true. You're always going to, that kid will always be your kid, but you know, I, I love my wife. I wouldn't get her name tattooed on me, and I'm sure she feels the same way. Really? Oh, well, yeah. No, it's not going to happen. Absolutely not. A lot, of, yeah, a lot of people do that. Yeah, a lot of people are dumb, too. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I think it's sweet if you're married. I think the issue is very, very young people in a new relationship that maybe feel super confident because everything's great, and then maybe they do it, and they don't end up working out. Once you're married, it's... A little different, I think. But eh. I see where you're coming from. Eh. Eh. No, I don't, no, I don't agree. Anyway, let's stump Steph. According to a survey, 3% of Americans are afraid to be, afraid of being alone here. Where is here? In a cemetery. No. Being alone this is, forever. I'm, being alone forever. No, no. <laughs> Interesting way to interpret it, but no, um, no, it's uh, it's an indoor thing. Three percent of Americans. 3%? You might be one of these people. I don't know what your feelings are about being alone in this place, but I know it does freak you out. So it freaks me out even when I'm with people. I don't know. So is it like a haunted house or something? No, it's nothing okay. haunted. It's a normal everyday thing. So it's not really supposed to be scary. No, not supposed okay. to. 
But if you're alone, hmm, is it a place that I go often? I wouldn't say often, but you've definitely been in one of these. Are there any around here? Oh, sure. What For what purpose do you go there? Like, is it like a place to shop or like an activity that you do? It, it can be in a place to shop. Ooh. But it's 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 in many different places. Do you go to it, them? I've yes, I've been in one of these many times. So it's like a specific activity happens at this place. Sure. Mm, it's a fun activity, yeah. No, it's just no. I don't think it's fun or not fun. I think it's just something you do. A bank. No. 3% of Americans are afraid of being alone here. Where is here? Mm -hmm. This is hard. It is. It is a little difficult. Is it? Is it like you don't want to be just alone because you're like scared of like monsters and ghosts or no. you just want to do it with somebody else? No, usually you just want to get it done as quick as possible. Oh... The tax place where you get your taxes done. <laughs> no, no, um, you're, you're, you are, I think this will end up giving it away, but you're scared of this place. You're scared of being stuck in this <gasps> place. Getting, getting shots at the doctor's office. No, 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 hospital. no, no. Oh, dang it. Dang no, it. No, think smaller, way, way, way smaller. You're scared of getting stuck in this place. Oh my gosh. Um, claustrophobic. It's a small place. Yes. Oh. Come on. Come on, Steph. Come on. A closet? Is it a closet? <laughs> Very close to a closet. Think of a closet, but mobile. Ooh, a closet on wheels. A food truck. No, no, no. It's not on wheels. Think mobile. A camper, like an RV. A mobile closet in a place you <laughs> shop would be a... A fitting room. Is a fitting room mobile? No. <laughs> no, think outside the store. Where you're walking, you have... The bathroom. No. It... Come on. Yeah. You've said before... In... You said before you would hate getting stuck here. In in this. What is this? A car trunk. No, no. The trunk of a car. Well, that'd be scary, yeah, but no. Come on, Steph. I don't know. I just keep thinking of places in the mall, like Color Me Mine. No, and no, like no, no. It's not a store. <laughs> it's not a store. It can help get you from one store to the other. A car dealership. No. <laughs> no. You're going to feel so dumb. when you... An elevator. It's an elevator. There we go. Elevator. That took forever. I, that was, I was really close with car dealership. You were, yeah, you were so close to car dealership. You were like right there. All right, we have to give you a chance to redeem yourself because that that was not a good look on you. Um, no. Some some of these are hard, but I think I gave you enough hints where it should have been a little bit easier for your yelling fitting room when I say it was mobile. <laughs> anyway, um, about one third of U.S. adults have never done this. What is it? One third of U.S. adults have never done this. What is this? Is it something that like you should be doing? No, it's not necessarily something you should be doing. Some do you do it? I have done it, and so have you. Hmm. you may, is it something? Fit? You maybe do it a couple times a year. I do it maybe once every year, every other year. Never done this. Go on to the dry cleaners. Interesting answer. No. Is it something physical? Uh, like an exercise? Yeah, like something that you're physically doing, like, like with your body. <laughs> what did you just do with your hands? Okay. Um. I mean, yes, you have to do something physical to do this. Okay. Never done this. Do you, you have to go somewhere to do it? Like you have to go somewhere outside your house? Yes, you have to leave your house. Is it something fun? 
I think so. And I think does it cost money? Yes. Never done this. Is it good for you? I, I don't think it's. I wouldn't say it's good or bad for you. Okay, so what's the purpose of doing it? Like, are you like accomplishing something, or it's just fun? Um, man, if I answer that, it's probably gonna give it away. Um, purpose of it is to get from one place to another. Buying a car. What? <laughs> Buying a car. No. Oh. Buying a plane ticket. Flying. <laughs> there we go. Good job. Like I said, that was going to give it away. I knew it. Yeah, it still wasn't good. We, we need to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's your Wednesday show. Uh, we'll see you guys back here tomorrow. We'll reload all questions and see if we can't do a little bit better. Bye. It's the Puffin Steph Podcast.